Good morning, I'm Frank Powers, and this is Lifestyle Tucson, the program where I speak to our neighbors, the people behind the scenes of our amazing organizations, small businesses, and nonprofits. Our friends are informing you how they serve our community, and they are here to give you updates on future projects. Let's make some new friends today. Yeah. Question, are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or your family ever seen a spook, specter, or ghost? Well, Arizona's original and first Ghostbusters franchise, the Arizona Ghostbusters, is a proud 501c3 nonprofit, and no event is too big, no charity too small. They've been serving communities in the great state of Arizona since their founding in 2007 with their core team in the Phoenix metro area. They have members in Tucson's metro area as well as northern Arizona, Flagstaff, Prescott, and all over the nation. Today, I'm fortunate enough to speak with Roy Wageman. What would we call you? Uh, simply volunteer. I'm relatively new to the company. I joined them last year after looking for a way to start giving back to the community and a way to put my, uh, you know, prop building habit to good use. The correct answer is, uh, back off, man. I'm a scientist. Yeah, I wish. Yeah, well, there you go. But that's Roy Wageman, <laughs> volunteer for the Arizona Ghostbusters. And he's here going to tell us all about this great organization that is actually nationwide part of Ghost Corps. And it's really such a big, amazing thing at all these events to see actual Ghostbusters walking around. You know, I... I... <laughs> try to pretend to be Venkman in public, but really I'm more of an Egon. I like to walk into the shadows and just <laughs> run things behind the scenes. So thank you for having me. Today. You're definitely more of an Egon. <laughs> I, I, lean, I lean toward a Ray for sure. I'm a Ray guy. Very Even nice. when it comes to uh, the real Ghostbuster, the animated series. Oh, very nice. Uh, definitely very nice. a Ray. You know who I've come to really appreciate is Winston. The more I watch it, the more I feel like I identify with Winston. Yeah. He's just he's there for the paycheck. Well, because he's a blue collar guy that just yeah. joins the team who is there. And he's just like, they do a lot of crazy stuff. I didn't think I'd see stuff like this. And he throws himself <laughs> into it completely. He and really does. if you rewatch those movies, he establishes himself as the biggest hero of the group. Yeah. All of his actions. He is the hero. I've I love things like this. There's probably you could probably make a YouTube video about this. I probably you, could. You yeah. probably could. I I bet. <laughs> like how like the Karate Kid Cobra Kai one that has now become reality. Right. Uh, from Johnny's perspective, Daniel is the villain, and then they used that to make an entire new franchise. Which is brilliant. Yeah, I, I'm sure the public at large would love to hear more about Ghostbusters. You that's know, right. you, you get a 40 year old film and you just can't say enough about it. Well, that's the funny thing about 1984 is that besides being a horrifying book that we're all headed toward our dismal future, yes. it's like one of the best years for movies and pop culture to this day. It's incredible. That yep. was the year that the uh, PG 13 ratings started to become a thing because no kidding. of uh, Gremlins and Temple of Doom. Isn't that something? Yeah, that was a huge year uh you always think that ghostbusters would have been the biggest film of that year right beverly hills cop wow was yeah. it back to the future that year as well or is yes. that next year because no, 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 that, that was 85 okay yep. Yep. pretty wild i love it but now let's talk about and focus on our favorite franchise of all these fandoms and it is ghostbusters that's all right Tell me about the Arizona Ghostbusters, because I've been getting everyone excited for this interview. I'm like, I get to interview the Arizona Ghostbusters. What a great opportunity, because I really only exclusively interview nonprofits. And right. what a great nonprofit organization. When I tell people, I'm like, they're a nonprofit organization, the Ghostbusters here in town. And they're like, what do you mean? What do they do? Tell us what the Arizona Ghostbusters do at all these great community events. Well, what the Arizona Ghostbusters do is we use the franchise's notoriety to draw extra attention to worthy causes and events, uh, hopefully drumming up more attendance, uh, more donations, uh, and more interest in whatever that charity might be. It's really fun. And again, you're not just here in Tucson. It's a part of Ghost Corps. That's There's right. a lot of these organizations all around the entire nation, and even the Ghostbusters themselves are affiliated and love that there's all these fan groups that do this. That's exactly right. Dan Aykroyd is a huge supporter of everybody that loves the Ghostbusters and loves to show their enthusiasm for the Ghostbusters. Uh, you know, it really, really shows the longevity of this franchise. Um, last I counted, I think there was at least 63 different organizations around the country. Uh, one in Mexico, five in Canada, um, 15 of them, I believe, at least 15 of them are actual 501c3 nonprofits like the Arizona Ghostbusters. Um, and yeah, there's at least one team in every state in the nation. And so I think it's, I think it's great that one, the enduring legacy is still carried on and two, using it for good. 
because that's the fun thing about it is that when kids meet, whether it's there's another great organization account in town called uh, the Just League Arizona, mm -hmm. there's the Arizona Avengers. And that's what some people that I'm talking about and telling them, like, don't you know about these great organizations like the Arizona Ghostbusters as well that show up dressed up as superheroes, dressed up as Ghostbusters, dressed up as some of your favorite fandom. And then you meet kids, you meet kids at hospitals, you go to community events, you go on parades. And to those kids, they are meeting Spider-Man. They're meeting a real Ghostbuster. And the fun thing about being a Ghostbuster is it's not that you have to be there and you're dressed as Egon. No, right. you're you're Roy Wageman, the Ghostbuster. That's right. It's your name on your on your um uniform. And I also love that about Ghostbusters, that they all have their last names on there. It makes it that it is your own thing, right. which is so fun. That's one of the best parts of this. And you are such a great cosplayer. Remember, that's what we call getting in costume now as adults because it's about making props. I like to call it costume business. Oh, costume <laughs> business. Well, let me adjust my my bow tie. But yeah, isn't that something? But but that's the thing. You hit the nail on the head there that uh, really attracted me to this. Um, working with kids and especially, you know, kids that are differently abled or have disabilities, Putting a smile on their face as a real Ghostbuster is, is an, an incredible feeling. Uh, you know, it's kind of that mall Santa sort of thing where to that child, you are real. And you're even more real than the characters in the movie because you're right there. You're in the flesh and you're your own person in this, you know, cosplay mode or mm -hmm. costume business mode. Um, and so, yeah, they, they ask you. If you're a real Ghostbuster and you say yes. Same thing with Santa Claus, right? That is, yeah. it is just like being the mall Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. And with little kids, you've all, you know, you, you folks that have little kids, you'll be walking around in a Home Depot and then they see an older guy that kind of looks like Santa Claus. To them, look, it is Santa that's Claus. Santa, yeah. It is, it is that. And that's what happens when they see a Ghostbuster as well. Right. The thing about doing all this for the kids is that it really is something that's just so fun that makes you mm -hmm. feel like being a kid still. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean- since I was three years old, I was dressing up as a Ghostbuster. I remember my my dad made me a made quote unquote me a proton pack out of an old cardboard Michelob box with a stick stuck in the back of it. You know, really? and so I was like, oh yeah, that was my first pack. Yeah, this was before even the uh, animated series came out, and all the toys were wow. popularized. Yeah, I was I was in it at the beginning. You know. Uh, and it was just one of those things that I, I don't think I ever grew out of, but then seeing what I could use it for, what I could use this, you know, for lack of a better word, obsession, mm -hmm. you know, you can use it to actually do some good in the community. I mean, it's a match made in heaven. So I, you know, I was thrilled to join up and I'm thrilled to see what next steps we can take in order to do more for the community. And that's even why you're here, because you were exactly. trying to say like, hey, I want to come talk about the Arizona Ghostbusters and talk about growing it. I have some bigger ideas for yeah. this group. And that's why I joined and I want it to grow and, and get bigger and better. And I'm so glad that you did, because having a, uh, a person that can be a bit more outgoing can come and talk to us about these things and really kind of really get the message out, not just, hey, we're at events and here we are. It's like, no, let me go out into the world, not at events events to right. talk about why you want us at those events. Yeah. And that's really cool. Let me show you something real quick. I've been waiting to show you. So uh, I don't want to say when I was a kid, but you know, uh, probably about 20 something years ago, I think my I've seen first this photo. cosplay, yeah. yes, is me as a Ghostbuster. That's a garbage can lid. I love Bike it. reflectors, glow in the dark tape, right? It's the first time that I did do some, some cosplay as an adult again, right? There I am. Beautiful. My favorite thing is, is that I put my disc man into the uh, into the wand, right, 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 so that I could play the theme song as it's shooting. There's a flashlight, so I could make lights happen. Sound effects came out of it. It was so impressive. And the girl I was dating at the time dressed like Madonna. So we were a perfect 1984 excellent. couple. It excellent. was excellent. So my question then for you is, why aren't you a part of this yet? So they had invited me to join the Arizona Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. and I did. I wanted to do it, but unfortunately, some of my own personal things just get in the way. I have my own mm -hmm. things that I'm trying to do with what I what I do out in the world. And we are often at the same events, but I'm doing right. my own thing. Of course. So they, they've asked me, I'm friends with Keaton. He's a great guy, great artist as well, mm -hmm. right? That's the thing about it is that I do love the group so much. It's just, it's just hard for me to find that time. But I tell other people about it because that's a big thing about Lifestyle Tucson. I try to tell people my message to everyone out there is don't make your friends do the thing that you want to do. Make friends with people doing the things you want to do. Right. You didn't try to start your own, 
let's dress, you know, dress up as this group or whatever. You're like, I found one that resonates with me. And I said, let me go join and not only join, but then try to shore up their numbers and be a spokesman for them. That's huge. That's huge. You know, and that's the thing that I try to get everyone to do is go find an organization that you're going to get involved in, whether it is some of these fun ones, like I said, the Avengers or or Arizona Ghostbusters or Just League Arizona, or a different one that's more for adults, whether it's the Gospel Rescue Mission or Angel Charity for Children, Helping Kids. Find a cause you care about and get involved with it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Go join a big group that's already up and running that needs volunteers to go and grow and get bigger and better. And that's what is so great about your organization and why you said, I want to come on and talk about it. And let's talk about what you came up with, because the reason you're here is something you conceived of because Mm -hmm. what's happening. We had Ghostbusters come back to life with Ghostbusters afterlife just a few years ago. I loved it. And now we've got Ghostbusters frozen empire coming out. Give us all the details because you've got a great big party all weekend long at the roadhouse cinemas. That's right. As far as being in Arizona Ghostbuster right now is the most exciting time and also the most stressful time because with the new movie coming out, we have to be everywhere. Yeah. We have to represent our organization and we have to do everything we can with it. Right now is the prime opportunity. So, yeah, we're going to be out at Roadhouse Cinema all of opening weekend on uh, Thursday, the preview night on the 21st. Uh, then Friday the 22nd, Saturday the 23rd. We're going to be there all afternoon into the evening, probably through the last showing of the day. Uh, you can't miss us. We'll be out on the patio. We're going to have our 15-foot inflatable marshmallow man up there. Woo-hoo! We're going to have um, at least three ectomobiles. No kidding. Individual cars all decked out with the rooftop rack and all that stuff. Um, we're uh, There's going to be games. There's going to be prizes. We'll probably intro some of the screenings and do trivia contests in the theaters. Um, and then just crazy photo ops outside. But the biggest thing that... I want to do with it is a charity raffle. Tell me about it. Using the notoriety of the franchise and our overall mission of raising awareness for important causes, um, I've drawn or I've I've turned my attention to small local nonprofits that are near and dear to my heart and I want to raise money for and near and dear to the other members' hearts as well. Uh, So each night at the Roadhouse, we will be selling raffle tickets. Uh, You will get your stub and you can deposit it in one of three charity buckets and 100% of the proceeds will be going to that charity. We're going to be supporting Tunidito, which is a wonderful group support organization that helps children process grief and understand their grief from the loss of a loved one. Uh, We're going to be supporting the Humane Society of Southern Arizona and the Arizona Cancer Foundation. Um, so, yeah, you decide where your money goes, and we will give 100% of it to these organizations. Isn't that incredible? Because that's the that's true volunteering. Because as we know, time is money, right? That we all say that. And these people are going to be donating their time and then not taking a dime from anything that you give. They're going to choose a great organization or have you choose which of those three causes you believe in. It's really funny. I was just talking to Lisa Chastain right before you got in here from Gospel Rescue Mission. And she said that your charity chooses you is what it is. Because yeah. it is that. Like it's when you have someone in your family that has something. In my family, it's MS. We have someone. In, so my family goes to the MS walks. We go. We, they care about that. They raise money for that. Other people, they care about their pets. They care about homeless children. They care about children in need that have gone through something. I've had Tunu Dito yeah. on Lifestyle Tucson before. What an amazing organization. Wonderful, wonderful Because you, over there. you don't even think about it, right? You don't even think yeah. like, oh, wow, we really probably do need to help kids cope with horrible situations like losing a loved one. Thank goodness there's a great organization that helps us do that. Yeah. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Adults have enough trouble with right. that, much less what a six-year-old is going to do who just lost their mother. You yeah. Know? It's, and so having children work with other children and these counselors, they do art projects and talk about their feelings and read books. And it, it, it I noticed it with my daughter that it helped tremendously getting over the loss of her grandmother. Getting over is a bad way to put it. No, I'd we say. get what you mean. Uh, yeah. We get what you mean. Uh, understanding mm-hmm. loss and understanding her emotions involved with that loss, and so yeah, they're they're a beautiful organization. Um, and anything I can do to support them for the first time in their history, they actually have a waiting list to get in, and so oh. helping them in any way to expand that organization—that's you know, number one in my book. 
That's wild. Like, well done. I'll just thank you for it because that's incredible. So let's just reiterate again. Go hang out with the Arizona Ghostbusters. And we're not done. We got plenty of time. I just want to reiterate the dates that it's coming out. March 21st is preview night. The Ghostbusters will start being around there around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Lots of photo ops, mm-hmm. lots of fun things going on, trivia contests, donating to charity, helping everybody out, probably getting some information on how someone can become an Arizona Ghostbuster themselves. How does one become an Arizona Ghostbuster? Well, you go to ArizonaGhostbusters.com, you send an email to the main email address, you go through a background check, since we do work with children and are an official nonprofit, 501c3. Uh, yeah, you just pass your background check, you say what you want to be doing in the organization, what you want to be a part of, and we add you to the roster. Um there's, you know, uh, minimal membership dues every year uh, that just help pay for the pamphlets and, mm-hmm. you know, table decorations and stuff. Well, look at this. So and, let's point this yeah. out again. So even just like you were saying, you're an organization and you're not giving a portion of the proceeds. Right. You're giving all the proceeds to these other organizations. Right. But then your organization yourself does have a budget. And you're fueling that budget. You're giving a small bit of dues, all of you together. So this will cover our print costs. This will cover that. Correct. So you're not even just donating time. You yourselves are donating money to your own organization. That's incredible. Right. And and yeah, indirectly to these charities uh, across the nights over at Roadhouse Cinema, like all of the prizes were either purchased or given by uh, members of the organization. And also, uh, you know, special note to Roadhouse itself is putting up a couple date night packages. Oh, nice raffles so a couple free movie passes and a popcorn uh popcorn bucket coupon yeah. i would say um yeah so those will be up for raffle uh you know you get five bucks for a ticket five for 20 pick where your money goes to all of it goes to charity or spread it around and help all the charities exactly right? exactly go. that's so exciting let's now again talk about just ghostbusters in general yeah just because let me ask you why ghostbusters why do you Ghost love the Busters. Ghostbusters so much? I think it's because they're just working class schlubs. They, That's true. They have they have the intelligent members amongst their ranks, but really, it was uh, the original movie is about starting a small business in it the is. '80s, you yeah. know, and it's about the trials and tribulations of that. Um, the kind of funny thing is, and one thing that attracts me to it is, they're not necessarily the good guys in that movie. You know, I don't disagree entirely with Pex. Uh, concern How? for the EPA, uh, you know, uh, that's true. emissions they that do they're have causing, like a nuclear reactor in their base, right? Right. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, it's it, I. I wouldn't say I'd argue it wasn't completely right of Ankman to just be dismissive and brush him off. Maybe they are causing some harm to the city along with saving it. So, you know, a, as I've matured, my. <laughs> My my look at both sides has matured, but that that isn't to say that Walter Peck in the movie isn't everything they call him. He is still without genitalia. Oh my goodness, he's one of history's greatest monsters. Yeah, sure. so. <laughs> I'm excited to see him back in the new one. I think he's. I, I think he, they it? have him as mayor or something. It no looks like kidding. From the trailers, yeah. See, that's yeah. fascinating because I do love that. When we get our when we get our sequels, especially our late sequels, mm-hmm. right? They can have the same tone of. Or a similar tone, a similar theme right. sometimes. Like, oh, you find out your heroes you love this whole time. Oh, they're dejected. They're miserable. They stop being friends, haven't spoken. Right. You know, and it's always hard. Then they reunite and do whatever. Yeah. But now it is. We're getting a sequel. Now we're going to see where this franchise takes itself into the future. I love the addition of Paul Rudd because he's a joy in anything and so fun, it's right? wonderful. Yeah. And the promise of this new one is great. Uh, I know that Afterlife, eh, well, there was a little contention around it. One, because of, as South Park put it, the member berries. You know, it had that kind of Force Awakens, like too much callback. It, it I still loved it. I still loved it. But I'm extra excited about this next one because we're back in New York. Paul Rudd is in the beige uniform. Yes. You know, we're and, and and the most encouraging thing that I read was when uh, Kamal Nanjiani, who stars in the film, uh, mentioned the influence that the real Ghostbusters animated series has on this new movie. So That's what I was going to bring up. They're cracking it wide open. They're, uh, you know, they're just going cojones to the wall, let's mm-hmm. say, and and doing something wild and new with it. And while still having those little references to the old movies, you can see in the trailer, the library ghost is back, sure. even little costuming elements. But, you know, just it it's more spices to this wonderful stew that they're making. 
uh, we all want our cheesecake. They call it an anime. You want the thing that we all know from the original Ghostbusters. What are they going to change the song? No, we want the song. Right. Right. We want to see them back doing some of their things. Right. I thought the the afterlife was was pretty good and fun. And oh, uh, what it's yeah, doing, it has it. its plot holes. Sure. But at the same time, I am very excited for where they're taking this because right. it is a newer idea where it's like, all right, we don't have to feel safe and we're like, let's go. And using the real Ghostbusters, the animated series, as the kind of the the tentpole for story, I think is the smart thing to do because mm-hmm. that's why a lot a lot of us love Ghostbusters. It's not yeah. just two films, and a lot of people didn't like Ghostbusters too. I yeah. love Ghostbusters. Too, Revisit but I was a kid. that second one. No, there, I love there it. is gold in that movie. Tons of it. Yeah, tons of it. Yeah, and there's a lot of fun with it. But really, the the cartoon did so much. What is? And I'm just going to ask you, what's your favorite episode of the cartoon? And or give me a memory from the cartoon. I want to say, much like most people's favorite episode, that Boogeyman episode. And that's where, what I wrote down. Yes. The one where Egon has to confront oh his my biggest gosh. fear. Yep. Incredible. What and, it be, let and, me say, J. Michael Straczynski, who yeah. goes on to become a very yes. amazing writer, yes. uh, was cutting his teeth writing some episodes of the Ghostbusters, and that's yep. why they are so good. And the animation's incredible as well. Oh, yeah. It's, it's very first good animation. Of seasons, too. Um, yep. they, there was a huge, it was like one of the first animes in America. To a degree, and, yes. Yeah, you look at the the style of it, it's it's incredible the amount of detail in those first couple of seasons when they had like that budget to like really do something yep. with it. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic show, and there's so many episodes that that stand out, uh, and so many kind of iconic villains that were created in yeah. the animated series. But yeah, when I was a kid, that Boogeyman episode scared the it hell just out of the me. The out of Oh my god, sticks to me absolutely. The does. design, they weren't afraid to be scary, just like the movies. At times, they're not afraid to be scary, and I like the look of this new one because there's some shots in a couple of the little trailers. Very scary. Yep. I love my my daughter is out on this one. Oh, she's like, a little scared. She she it does look scary. Going, you know, something about being in the big theater, forty foot screen, super loud. She went and saw Afterlife, and there were a couple of parts that got her good. You know, really? so this this one, she saw the trailer and she's like, nah, nah, I'm out. That's crazy. <laughs> I want to actually tell you something about design. So yep. real quick, see this tattoo on my leg? Look at that tattoo. Right there of oh, that skeleton there. Beautiful. Playing guitar. So I got that down at Red Sky uh, tattoo down on fourth mm-hmm. because I found out as I was looking at this skeleton, I was talking to the tattoo artist. His name was Philip J. Felix. Philip J. Felix was an amazing tattoo artist here. He owned that studio and he kind of redrew a different version of the skeleton. I'm like, no, I really want that one that's kind of on your poster. I know it's right. even weird to want a poster, but I don't know what it is about that skeleton. It just looks so animated. It just looks so. He, he said, what is it about? I'm like, I don't know why. It just looks so animated. I'm like, I feel like it looks like it is moving. Just the way he's wanging this guitar and whatever. It just looks so animated. He's like, you know, it's funny you keep saying that. And I go, why? He goes, because I'm actually an animator. I go, really? He goes, oh, nice. I animated and designed all the all the things on the real Ghostbusters. Oh, I'm like, no what? Way. Yep. That's he awesome. He also did the very first uh, sketches of Shrek. When they were designing Shrek, he worked on the Men in Black cartoon, where if you remember some of those aliens and monsters, very excellently drawn and designed, yes. right? Yeah. But yeah, Philip J. Felix That's was an awesome. amazing guy. And it's so expressive. That and tattoo. yes, yeah. and I, I just I would go back to him and talk to him about animation a little bit. He's just such an awesome dude. He just passed away a few months ago. Oh, man. So I and I've been meaning to like say something about it. And I knew I was going to be like, you know what? We're going to talk about Ghostbusters today, and I know we're going to talk about the cartoon, and I guarantee it comes up naturally. The fact you bring up those designs, I'm like, and that's what drew me to it as yeah. well. So, yeah, well, that I just is, want to that say that. That is a tremendous loss. Yeah, you know? no, it, it is. Because, it, yeah, those it, his designs stand out as iconic, and yep. I didn't know his name. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Yep. yep. Speaking of tattoos, two points here. One, check out my right shoulder. I was going to ask, do you have any Ghostbusters tattoos? Yep. That was my next question. I, you know, I decided, like, oh, I really want a tattoo. I want something that I'm always going to like. I don't want to get a tramp stamp or anything. Sure. <laughs> I don't want any mistakes. I want something that's going to be on me and I'm going to love for the rest of my life. And I was like, oh, there's one thing I've liked since I was three years old. Wow. Ghostbusters. And so, you know, no matter what, I'm always in uniform. That's um, well done. Yeah. Uh, and then one of our members, uh, Henry Cortez, yeah. he is 
brilliant tattoo artist. Okay. Brilliant. I'm actually, uh, you know, looking at him to get some more done around my logo. The painting you of know, Vigo on your bit. back? Yes. <laughs> That'll be excellent. Hey, we're going to have a, a life-size Vigo cutout at Roadhouse to take pictures Heck with. Yeah. So, you know, somebody bring a cat to pose with. <laughs> I love my deep cut references. That's amazing. <laughs> but what a good time. Um, let me ask Absolutely. you this. Let me, let me look for just some other questions that I did have, because uh, I want to know what the goals of the Ghostbusters are going forward in 2024, the Arizona Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. and where else we're going to see you throughout the year. I just saw you, obviously, at the Tucson Festival of Books, mm -hmm. but you guys are at a bunch of great uh, uh, fun events and organizations. Uh, tell me some of the other places we might see you throughout the year. Uh, the typical events that we do, well, especially October is a busy time for us with our trunk or treats and boo at the zoo. Uh, specifically in Tucson, we will do... Basically, any walk, mm -hmm. leukemia walk, or uh, um, there's the Arizona Kidney Walk up in Phoenix. We'll do events like uh, Kids Need to Read. Yeah. Um, we were in the Fiesta Bowl Parade. We were in the Tucson Light Parade. Um, you know, the the events come in kind of last minute sometimes. They when often people, do when you're yeah, ready to go. Yeah, when people like learn that, hey, we exist, they'll they'll snag us as they soon as they can. They make that call and then all of a sudden Janine screams, we got it, one! Exactly. And you're ready exactly. to show up. But yeah, like like you said at the top, no event too big, no charity too small. We, we are game. If you think we can help your organization, we will be there. And that's the cool thing about being a member is um, – there's so many of us. I think there's 50 current members in the Arizona Ghostbusters. Uh, it allows us to skip events if we need to. There's always going to be enough of us. But I'm always looking to grow the ranks, especially in Tucson. There's predominantly four of us that are going, I mean, how apropos, but there's predominantly <laughs> four of us that are going around to these events, and we can always use more. I would love to see more uh, diversity and representation, mm -hmm. first of all, because you, you don't want to see, you know, just a couple of white dudes standing around. Just in this three day white and dudes, and they I... keep the black guy off the poster. Come oh, on, I know we've come a long I way. Know. Winston's in charge now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> He's a big cheese. So yeah, we we definitely want to grow our ranks in the in the new year here, which is one reason that I'm here. And the other is just to expand the good that we are doing for the community. Um, hence, like starting doing charity raffles and focusing on specific nonprofits. At all these events we do, uh, and when I when I joined, I was like, "This is great. We're we're here, and our presence is bringing attention to these causes. But we can still do more, and that's what I want to do with the future. I want to take the group in the direction of being proactive and not just having a presence, but actually raising funds to support important causes throughout the Tucson region." Like, yeah, that's a sweet goal and a good goal and something you should help this man do by joining the ranks. Because why wouldn't you want to be a Ghostbuster? What are you, afraid? Come on. Nothing to be afraid of. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. All right. We've got nothing to worry about because today we made friends with Roy Wageman, volunteer for the Arizona Ghostbusters. He's ready to believe you. Thank you for joining me today, Roy. Pleasure to be here, Frank. Thank you. This was Lifestyle Tucson. Bing bong bing, time for a recap. I really enjoyed catching up my old friend, Roy. I'm glad to see that he is now an Arizona Ghostbuster. You should volunteer to join this great organization or perhaps another organization like Justice League Arizona or the Arizona Avengers. There's a lot of great groups in town that do a lot of great stuff for kids just by simply dressing up. And it'll get you, I don't know, out and about. Why don't you go check out uh, Grant Swan, the Roadhouse Cinemas, March 21st. And Friday the 22nd, Saturday the 23rd. The Arizona Ghostbusters is going to be out and about there oh, for half the day, maybe all day. Go get all the details over on Facebook. You can find them just by looking up Arizona Ghostbusters. You can find them online also at ArizonaGhostbusters.com and follow them on Facebook at AZ underscore Ghostbusters. Or I also wanted to make sure that I got uh, it in there that uh, Bustin makes him feel good. He forgot to say it, so I got to make sure it's in there. The thing I forgot to say and kind of brag about is that I have an animation cell of Slimer holding a sandwich from the real Ghostbusters. Turns out it's from the very first episode, and I couldn't believe it when I noticed it. So I do love the Ghostbusters. Maybe not as much as Roy, but I'm close. So I want to thank our new friends at the Arizona Ghostbusters for joining me today. You've been listening to Lifestyle Tucson. If you're a nonprofit that would like to be on the show, email lifestyletucson at gmail.com. For more information about this program or to listen to something you may have missed, go to the Sunday Mornings page on klpx.com, kfma.com, mixfm.com, or espntucson.com. 
You can also subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and Audible, or wherever fine podcasts ain't afraid of no ghost. Follow on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Lifestyle Tucson because I'm your BFF, your best Frank forever, Frank Powers. Toot toot Tucson, I love you the most. Rest in power, Philip J. Felix of Red Sky Studio Tattoo, an animator and character designer of the real Ghostbusters.